Episode 271, Henry's Invasion Grandma, why didn't you go to Soph's place when her mom invited you to stay with them for a couple of days? Jacob asked his grandma while eating. I didn't want to bother them, and your parents will be back in a few days anyway, his grandma replied. I have to force them to live here for a while this time. The entire house suddenly shook intensely. Is it an earthquake? Grandma put down the spoon and asked nervously. The moment Grandma spoke, more than a dozen powerful auras came from outside. The isolation array formation that Jade and Julia set up around the house was destroyed and they heard a sound. Jacob stood up immediately. From his sharp sense of being on the third level, he could tell that the house was surrounded. Soon, the house stabilized and stopped shaking. Grandma was still a bit suspicious. Could it be that a nearby building fell? Grandma, please continue eating. I'll go check. Jacob walked to the door and turned around to look at Jade and Julia with a meaningful look. You guys stay with Grandma. His tone was calm, but he knew clearly that there were many enemies. As Jacob walked out the door, a red energy sphere enveloped him instantly. Henry, holding the golden spear in his hand, smirked viciously as he stared at Jacob. At the same time, 16 rays of silver light passed through the door and flashed inside the house. Jacob wanted to turn back and make sure that his grandma was safe, but Henry's long spear stabbed forward and blocked Jacob's way. The sound of a series of explosions came from the house. Obviously, Jade and Julia were fighting with the 16 elders from the South Atlantic already. Jacob looked up and discovered that the surrounding 15 meters of the house had been covered by a red energy sphere. It meant that this house had been isolated into a small world. Other people couldn't see and hear what was going on inside it. Jacob was worried about his grandma. He raised his hand to shoot out lightning and continued to rush toward the entrance of the house. The white lightning made a series of zapping sounds and hit Henry's chest, but it didn't cause him any harm. Underneath Henry's clothes was the golden chained armor. This was a treasure that South Atlantic took from the Nine Dragon Palace a long time ago. After South Atlantic's decades of research, 12 restrictions on it had been opened and it could defend against any attack under the fifth level. Jacob's lightning could break the five elemental energy shields, but it couldn't cut through this golden chained armor from the Nine Dragon Palace. The long spear stabbed unrelentingly at Jacob's face. Last time, there was only Reggie to protect him. This time, Henry had 16 high-level elders around him, so he was fearless. Jacob didn't have any weapon, and that was a huge disadvantage for him. The sword array formations required a certain distance to exert their power. Henry was close to Jacob and attacked him continuously to prevent him from releasing any sword array formations. Jacob heard the fighting sounds in the house and had to dodge Henry's spear. It was imaginable how anxious he was. South Atlantic's action already went over the line. Snowflake rolled out from the hidden space and instantly spat a fireball at Henry. Henry raised his spear to block it, but the fireball suddenly cracked and burned some of his hair. Where did this stupid dog come from? Henry's spear released a golden light and struck Snowflake's belly firmly. Snowflake rolled on the ground, crawled up, and spat another fireball at Henry. The fireballs that Snowflake spat were the powerful fire called the True Flames. Those flames were used to create elixirs and treasures. Jacob took the time that Snowflake bought him to release the Snake Array Formation. Eighty sword energies dashed at Henry's forehead and struck furiously. The power of the fifth level was integrated with Snowflake's true flames. 
Henry swung his long spear and avoided the attacks quickly. However, this sword array formation moved with Jacob's thoughts and went behind Henry's back. Using his mind to control the swords, he almost reached the realm of the sword god. The Sword Shadow Scroll didn't rely on treasures because it was the strongest treasure in itself. The sword energies hit Henry's chained armor with loud clanking noises. Even though the sword energy couldn't pierce through the armor, the power of Snowflake's true flames struck Henry. Henry felt a burn on his chest, and his dragon core that wasn't solid enough got injured again. True Flame was the flame that could make elixir pills and cores. This scorching heat burned Henry's dragon core. How could he feel good about it? Henry was confident with his recovered strength of the third level, with the help of pills, and the addition of the golden spear and golden chained armor. He thought that it would be more than enough to fight against Jacob, who had barely just stepped into the third level. However, both Jacob and Snowflake's speed of advancement were beyond his estimation. Snake Array Formation, which was much more advanced than the basic Sword Array Formations, could pierce through a small hill. The fireballs that Snowflake spat were the true flame that could melt ordinary treasures. Third level cultivators wouldn't be able to stand the combination of the true flame and Sword Array Formations. If Henry didn't wear the golden chained armor, he would be turned into ashes from this encounter. At this moment, the elders had followed his instructions and they were all already inside the house. He would be daydreaming if he thought that he could be saved by them. Besides, Jacob wouldn't give him the chance to go near them now. Earth Elemental Array Formation Fire Elemental Array Formation Two sword array formations with enormous scope were aimed in Henry's direction and flew toward him speedily. After reaching the third level, Jacob's nature essence was even more abundant, and every single fundamental sword array formation's power had doubled. The earth and fire elemental array formations contained 32 sword energies each. As long as Snowflake could keep distracting Henry, Jacob could release the Sword Array formations. Snowflake fought up close, and Jacob cast ranged attacks. It was the perfect combination. Sixteen elders had gone inside to capture one old woman. It's a mission that should have been accomplished immediately. Henry was worried that there might be traps inside, so he had all of them go inside. He believed that the elders would come out and rescue him any moment now. Then, he would be able to beat Jacob up and have his head. Seeing two overlapping array formations coming at him, the golden spear in Henry's hands expanded to three meters in length. When he swung the spear, it released dozens of golden lights, and they all seemed powerful. With more than a dozen collisions, the space in front of the entrance turned into a vacuum, creating a whirlpool effect. Henry felt like his chest became stuffy. His dragon core, which wasn't fully recovered from the last time, cracked again. Seeing Henry not moving, Snowflake didn't hesitate and instantly spat out two fireballs and both landed on Henry's chest. Jacob's sword energies didn't stop either. They formed a snake array formation and rushed toward Henry's chest. Eighty sword energies came one after another and struck Henry like an electric shock. Even though the chained armor was not broken, he still felt the impact. He was thrown away by the force, and his spear also flew out of his hands. Snowflake turned back into its full-size form and jumped over. Its sturdy and powerful golden front paws pressed down on Henry's hands. Snowflake bared its fangs, brought its mouth near Henry's face, and roared. Its sharp teeth touched his nose, and Henry's hair was blown in different directions from the howl. Henry was terrified. His soul almost left his body. 
Snowflake's mouth contained a tumbling hot fireball, and its paws could emit flames at any time as well. This forced Henry to stay put. Grandma! Jacob was worried about his grandma and rushed into the house. In the living room, other than a broken coffee table and display cabinet, there weren't any significant damages. The six eighth-level elders and ten seventh-level elders were bundled up with one black and one white ring. They couldn't move their hands and feet as they were tied against each other. Jade and Julia stood on the side. Julia was reciting a spell and looked at them calmly, and Jade stuck white cloth inside their mouths. On the floor of the living room was an arrangement of many flashing five-colored circles. It was evident that the whole living room was covered in traps. If someone stepped on them, he or she would immediately be captured. Jade and Julia relied on the traps to capture these elders as they fell right into the traps. Jacob was worried about his grandma and asked them hurriedly, Where's grandma? Too many people came in at once and grandma fainted. Julia pointed in the direction of the couch. <laughs> 